So let's let's begin with the first one. A box of chemicals in a laboratory has the following symbol attached to it. Okay, this is the symbol attached to a bottle of chemicals. Now, describe the nature of chemicals in the box related to the symbol. Okay, so whenever you're going to you see this symbol, just know that uh, it means that those chemicals can easily catch fire or catch what? Catch fire easily. Okay, so you say, um, describe the chemicals in the box. The chemicals. Okay, you say chemicals um, easily catch what? Catch fire. Okay, sometimes they can be written highly flammable. Highly what? Highly flammable. It's just one and the same thing uh, easily catching what? Catching fire. Okay. Now, write a laboratory rule which uh, that is observed when handling chemicals in this box okay so if it catches fire then automatically it needs to be so it must be kept okay in a cool and dry place okay in a cool all right and the dry uh, place okay cool and dry place so when you say cool and dry place it means uh, with low uh, temperature okay with low temperature all right Let's proceed. When a bottle of ammonia is opened, when a bottle of ammonia is opened, within a few minutes, it smells. It, it, uh, it smell spreads through the laboratory, throughout the laboratory. Name the process responsible for the evenly spreading of the smell of ammonia um, solution. So the process here is called diffusion not osmosis or active transport but it is what diffusion okay diffusion because diffusion is just the movement of particles from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower what lower concentration okay lower concentration um down the concentration what concentration uh, gradient now <laughs> describe the process responsible for the evenly uh, for the even spreading of the smell of ammonia uh, ammonia solution describe the process responsible so we have to describe what the diffusion okay so diffusion So, diffusion of ammonia particles move from particles, diffusion of ammonia, okay, uh, during diffusion, let me just say, during diffusion of ammonia, particles move from the region of high concentration. Okay. High, high concentration. Concentration to the region of lower concentration 
lower concentration okay the region of lower concentration let's just end here this is just a mark let's proceed relate the evidence which um which the process named in question a Roman number one provided to the kinetic what um it provide, provides to the kinetic theory of matter. Now, we need to know what the kinetic theory of matter states. So, the kinetic theory of matter states that matter is made up of 10 particles that are in continuous random, random motion. So, here you can just say, um, particles Particles of matter are uh, in in continuous, okay, continuous, uh oh, continuous, random motion, okay, then continuous random random motion so we're done with question this is question what question one let's go to question what question two okay so question two here we are we are given an apparatus they're saying the following diagram shows a piece of apparatus used in the laboratory all right so this is the apparatus here with the of it, a stopper and the tap here the first question is name the piece of apparatus shown in the diagram so this apparatus here is what is the separating funnel okay separating funnel a separating funnel it's an apparatus or a separation technique or method that is used to separate immiscible, two immiscible body, liquids. The liquids that do not mix completely, like oil and water. And water. Okay? So, question B1, identify, identify one property of a mixture separated by the piece of apparatus named in one. Yes. Um, you can say immiscible um immiscible liquids okay Imi, immiscible okay Imi, immiscible liquids okay immiscible liquids liquids that do not mix completely that, that do not just mix okay now Suggest the names of two liquids that can be separated by the piece of apparatus shown in the diagram. So, you can say water and oil. Mm -hmm. Water and oil. Last question. On question two. Suggest... Suggest two precautions that need to be taken to se uh, to separate the mixture in the in B two. Okay. Now, two precautions are that number one, you need this tap needs to be closed. Okay, before filling the funnel. So, close the tap. Close the tap. before filling the funnel filling the funnel with a mixture okay then number two um, suggest I mean the second one is that you need to to clean this must be clean okay Clean the apparatus. Okay, apparatus. Clean the what? The apparatus. Which is the separating what? Separating 
funnel okay which is the separating funnel all right so that's all so we're given two questions but it's a, it's a mark oh okay maybe the, maybe there was a mistake let's go to question three question three so question three is saying the following diagram shows the electronic configuration of the ion of element of an element m so this is an, an ion of an L of element m then the first question now before we go to the question look at this when you look at this this is the ion and since it's two plus since it's two plus it is it means that it is giving out uh, it is donating okay so there's a transfer of electrons two electrons so the only so how we can know that this is this atom is um uh, this element is by counting the by counting the number of electrons so you have two plus eight ten plus another eight eighteen plus the two electrons twenty then we go to the periodic table on the periodic table and check element number twenty we're going to find that it is calcium okay it is calcium all right so based on me that knowledge we can uh, proceed and uh, look at the questions draw the atomic structure and write the electronic configuration of the neutral atom you see neutral what neutral atom uh, okay so they're asking us to come up with a neutral neutral atom so the neutral atom it is the element before the tr before um, the transfer of electrons or before uh getting uh, electrons okay or accepting electrons or before involving in chemical bonding okay so so we're going to say so this is the space that we're given we draw here so we're going to say this is the nucleus let's represent the nucleus with this one okay the first t shell will occupy how many electrons two electrons okay the second shell will occupy eight electrons one two three four five six seven eight okay the third shell will occupy will occupy one two eight electrons as well six seven eight okay now because of these two electrons that we are lost we can we have another another shell okay like this so one two okay so that's it now you should know that this one is a cation cation have fewer number of electrons you should not take note of that fewer number i mean this one is an atom but this one is a cation uh, that's what i wanted to say okay so a cation has a fewer number of what of electrons than the element check if you count the number of electrons here will be the number of ele electrons will be 18 but here the number of electrons in the atom is 20 so that is a cation then an ion since it's gaining you don't have an ion but i'm just explaining an ion is gaining electrons it will have more number of electrons than the original uh, atom okay than the neutral atom because it is gaining electrons so you should have knowledge of chemical bonding let's go let's proceed so the electronic configuration the first shell occupies up to two so it will be two second shell eight then another eight then two so what do we know about this the number of shells determine the period then determines the period of an element on the periodic table so since it has one two three four four shells then it is in period four then the number of electrons in the outermost shell determines the group in which the ele element is on the periodic table so this element here okay let's proceed give the name 
group and period of element M. The name here is Kausham. Kausham. So you check on the predictable uh, element number 20. Okay. It is Kausham. Group. It is in group 2. Okay. In group 2. So usually use Roman numerals for groups. Okay. Period. It is in period what? 1, 2, 3, 4. It is in period D. 4. Okay. It is this simple. Now. Compare the reactivity of a, compare the reactivity of an atom M and an ion M, the reactivity. You should know that atom M, atom of M, so this is an atom of M, an atom of M is reactive okay is reactive wow or whereas whereas the ion of m is any reactive because 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 it is stable it is now stable this is reacting because it is not it is not stable but this one is stable because uh, that's why it is not what it is uh, not reacting okay